Okay, what's going on people, welcome back to another video, my name is Yuizy and you're watching a video with a little bit of a difference, I hope you're all doing well, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen, but for now let's get down to business because there is plenty I want to talk about today, because there is something that's been playing on my mind. I watch a lot of football and I would say that I'm lucky to be able to watch a lot of football, but it's not luck. You know, I've chosen to watch a lot of football and I'm trying to create a path for myself in life where I can watch more football. That has always been my aim. I love the game and I was brought up to love to learn, to always ask questions. And, you know, I'm intrigued by so much that I often go down little rabbit holes so that I can talk with confidence about the things that I love because really frustrates me when I see people talking about stuff which they don't have a clue about and it's quite obvious that not a lot of people have a clue about Sheffield United so in this video I want to learn with you I want to educate you maybe make you wake you up a little bit to the fact that Sheffield United have a very good manager who is doing things differently, has an incredible record, and I think deserves a little bit of respect. Before I get a copyright strike on my channel, or this video gets blocked, I want to do the fair use. Basically, I'm doing this for non-profit educational purposes. Please don't block my channel. Thank you. We're going to kick things off with this tweet here from the BBC. This is Garth Crooks talking on the BBC's final score. I've got to say, I've watched, this is the third game I've seen Sheffield United. Um, they're going to struggle. Okay, he thinks that they're going to struggle. It's a newly promoted team. And quite frank, I think the style of football is quite basic for the Premier League. This is really starting to grind my gears now because I'm hearing this a lot. Their style of football is quite basic. <laughs> What's becoming incredibly evident is that punditry in this country is actually full of people who are being overpaid, very lazy, haven't done their homework, and are pretty clueless about what they're supposed to be teaching us about. Now, you're entitled to your opinion, obviously, and I personally think that they are going to need a little bit more in terms of potency up front. Football warrants anything more than basic is insulting my intelligence, and you're actually working for the BBC, so you're robbing the taxpayer. That's misinformation. Next up, we're on Sky Sports. All the big names with all the transfer rumours and all the information that we need, all the in-the-know status, you know, the sources. You know, let's see what these frauds are saying. It's, it's not the most glamorous club. It's not okay, again, we're just going in there with the most glamorous thing. What does that mean? It's not the most glamorous. We're going to get into this because it's disgraceful, actually, that the British press, the English media, aren't backing this incredible story and because I've delved deeper having seen I watched the first game and I was like hang on I don't watch championship football that much I'll admit I don't it's when it's on type of thing but lads I can't explain to you how impressed I was the most glamorous way of playing it's not the most glamorous way of playing. Here we go again. Another actual bald fraud with a shiny bald top telling me that what I'm seeing is actually wrong. Danny Mills. Wow. You're most famous for getting nutmegged by Thierry Henry and you've got a complex about it. That's why he hates Arsenal. I don't know what he's got against Sheffield. Together, I want us to appreciate a second what's going on here because to me, this is one of the most magical stories in football. And... This guy should be celebrated. He is a manager with an extraordinary record who is achieving great things and doing them in a very unique way that not everyone has cottoned on to yet just yet. And that is quite clear to see. I did the kickoff over the weekend and I love doing the kickoff. But it was like the final straw for me. So let's talk about this guy. What is he doing? Who is he? Where's he from? And what's he done? His name's Chris Wilder. He is actually from Sheffield. He's from a place called Stocksbridge in Sheffield. And as you can see, he's wearing a Sheffield United kit because he played for the Blades and it's his first club. He was born in Sheffield. And the fact that he's now manager in itself is something that I think is kind of beautiful. How easy is it to get behind one of your own? 
being a former right back, perhaps he understands wing back play and systems that you can employ them with slightly more than other managers might. And especially with the importance of wing backs these days, I think that really could play into their hands. But let's have a look at his managerial career. He started off at Alfreton Town, where in 27 weeks, he won four trophies. Yes, that's non-league football, but that in itself is quite impressive. He's learned a lot on the job at Halifax Town, spending six years there, briefly at Bury, and then six years at Oxford United. In his first full season, he's got Oxford United promoted through the playoffs. The jump from non-league to league football for Oxford United is massive, right? So for three years, they couldn't get playoffs, but he's secured them as a football league club again for the first time in years, and then has moved to their League Two rivals, Northampton. They were in the relegation zone in League Two. They've successfully battled off relegation to the conference, and he's led them to a mid-table finish. The following season... They've won the league with 99 points. The next year he's moved to Sheffield United. League One football. It's a big step up again. And he actually makes a very poor start. The first four games I think they get one point from. After that, it's plain sailing as they are very difficult to stop and go on to become League One champions with 100 points. 99 points with one club, 100 points with another club. There's a year gap and then they're promoted, making that two promotions in three years at Sheffield United and he's not had much money a lot of the transfers were free the signings are not world-class players but he is building his team that is more than the sum of its parts and is already starting to shock some of the Premier League at least the people that are actually watching but this is a quote from Dave Bassett talking about Wilder's playing days look at Carl Walker Chris probably had better technique and could certainly cross a ball better but Walker has pace. If a winger got past Chris, he wouldn't be able to get back. So, what we've got here is someone who understands being a right back, and more importantly, wing backs, and we know how important they are in the modern game. So, let's have a look at their results so far. Tenth in the table after four games. The four games, a 1-1 draw away from home against Bournemouth, a 1-0 win at home to Crystal Palace, who have the best defensive record in the league. A 2-1 defeat at home to Leicester City, who probably got the most complete or most balanced midfield in the Premier League. And a 2-2 draw away from home at Stamford Bridge. And it's that game at Stamford Bridge that I want to focus on very briefly. Shit, County! You're just a shit, County! As you can see, Wilder employing a lot of attention to the wings, with 14 crosses coming in from the left-hand side as they look to expose Aspilicueta and Tomori. It's anything but basic. This is the pass map of Chris Basham, their centre-back, right centre-back, who is playing in all kinds of... He's in midfield. He's, up, he's, up, he's, playing, he's playing right wing. The constant overlapping fools teams into thinking that they've got one man covered and suddenly another one appears. It's beautiful to see it happen. It's brave and it's revolutionary in the way that people talk about Pep Guardiola. In fact, the only manager in England's top four divisions who's won more league matches than Chris Wilder since the start of 2016-17 season is Pep Guardiola. At the end of game week four, no team starts their attacks higher up the pitch than the newly promoted Sheffield United. Look at that. With a higher press than Liverpool, Manchester City or Manchester United. In the championship last season, they were in the bottom half for aerial duels one and in the top half for ratio of short to long passes. So how is this basic? We've got overlapping centre-backs, wing-backs. Look at Stevens and Baldock, two of the most exciting wing-backs in the league, both with assists to their name already this season. You've got rapturous fans loving the fact that they're back in the big time for the first time in God knows how long. But why are they being judged as the same team as they were back then? The style of play is advanced. The manager is very successful all levels of the game he's English he's from the area of the club that he's managing this should be being celebrated they've spent about 40 million Oliver McBurney Musset Callum Robinson Luke Freeman Ben Osborne Phil Jagielka Morrison Verip so a few on freeze as well and I'm by no means saying that they're going to win the league or you know top four <laughs> but 
I don't think they're getting relegated. They're going to be very difficult to beat. Defensively, they're incredibly difficult to break down. Incredibly well organised. They're patient. And you saw against Chelsea, they waited for their moment. They were calm. They know just to work it into that danger area and they will get a chance. You have been warned. And please, stop insulting our intelligence by telling us that this is basic stuff. When already, they have the same amount of points as Chelsea and Manchester United for a fraction of the cost. When did the league become about how expensive your players are and who's spent the most in the transfer window and moments like VAR and controversy about socks? When did we stop actually looking at the football? Who is actually out here getting paid to watch the football? Balls frauds, please actually try and watch the football. That's about it for this time. I'm going to love you and leave you now. My name's been Hugh Izzy and this has been a lot of fun.